This is some crazy news coming out of Japan. As the country, in its last-ditch efforts to reverse the population crisis plans to double its budget on childcare over the next couple of years, raise cash payouts to families with children, and provide homes for eligible parents. The Japanese Prime Minister announced that his country would be taking drastic measures to reverse population decline by 2030. Now we have Japanese researchers on the brink of creating human eggs that can be grown in a fake womb to create lab-grown babies for the country. And if Japan is doing this now, we only have a couple of years left before this starts to take place in other economies, such as the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Europe, Australia, and others. America is getting to the point where an average person working an average job making average pay, working 40 hours per week, can't afford kids, a wife, and a house. If men can have children without women, this could actually fix a lot of our social issues. Men raising a generation of kids without the toxic influence of the mother could turn a lot of things around. Now we just need android wives that can help raise the kids and homeschool them. The concept of lab-grown babies, sometimes referred to as artificial wombs or ectogenesis, has been the subject of intense scientific exploration and ethical debate. While we are not yet capable of creating a completely lab-grown human baby, advancements in bioengineering and reproductive medicine are inching us closer to this reality. The process would theoretically involve creating human gametes, eggs and seeds, in a laboratory, often from stem cells which would then be used to create a human embryo via in vitro fertilization or IVF. This embryo could then be grown in an artificial womb, a bioengineered uterus, for the duration of a standard pregnancy. If you think about it, lab-grown babies would be a win-win for men. No more financial destruction from child support, alimony or common law scams. Imagine you can have a family without a woman. No marriage, no divorce. You even need to date to have your legacy. It allows men to have children even if they can't attract a woman. They can also select for good genes so that their child is more desirable and is best set up to succeed. Lab-grown babies aren't about people being able to have children at any age. It's about being able to make economic slaves that have no parents to question how they're used when they've matured. They're making more agreeable slaves because we have too much to say. Men that want a legacy will no longer have to struggle under the tyranny of women to do that. Men will be able to have sons without a woman at all, and no woman will be able to take his sons away from him. I can't think of anything that would be better for men, since women are not going to change back into traditional women that are virgins when you marry them, or give up their total power over men in the sight of the law. According to an article online, a Japanese scientist at Kyushu University, who has already figured out the process in mice, believes he is just five years away from replicating the results in humans. But there are ethical concerns, as it means women of any age could have babies. Parents may also want to design their offspring to have certain traits using gene editing tools, giving way to the notion of an assumed perfect child. The ability to produce custom-made human seeds and eggs in the lab is called in vitro gametogenesis, IVG. It works by taking cells from a person's blood or skin and reprogramming them to become induced pluripotent stem cells, IPS cells. In theory, these cells can become any cell in the body, including egg and seed cells. They could then be used to make embryos and implanted into women's wombs. Scientists have been able to make very basic human eggs and seeds this way, but have not yet been able to make embryos. It would mean that scientists could generate seeds and eggs for infertile people from one of their blood cells, for example. About one in 10 couples in the US struggles to conceive, and some of those are same gender couples or hopeful single parents who have to rely on donated seeds or eggs, IVF, and in some cases surrogates. But there are still lots of ethical, legal, and safety questions surrounding IVG. One of the unsettling possibilities that this technology presents is the potential misuse of DNA. In a world where lab-grown babies are possible, stealing someone's DNA using something as simple as a strand of hair to produce babies without their consent could become a reality. Despite all the research, there's still time before we have the ability to grow a human baby entirely in a laboratory. There are significant technical challenges to be overcome, particularly concerning the early and late stages of pregnancy, which are incredibly complex and still not entirely understood. Moreover, the idea of lab-grown babies raises a multitude of ethical and societal questions. These include concerns about the implications for our understanding of parenthood and family and the risk of unforeseen consequences for the children born through this process. While the prospect of lab-grown babies is intriguing and holds the potential to revolutionize human reproduction, 
It also poses profound scientific, ethical, and societal challenges that we must be carefully considered. Guys, if and when humans start making lab-grown babies, it's going to change the whole game of relationships. Men generally want wives because they want to start a family. Women who know they have the power to produce babies use this to their advantage and exploit men for their resources in order to gain better social status and bank, along with hypergamy to their full benefit. And now, with lab-grown babies a reality, women are going to not be as important as they were before. If a man wants to start a family but doesn't want to marry someone because he fears a divorce, what's he going to do? He's going to go to the research center and get a lab-grown baby for himself and perhaps his girlfriend, or maybe he will want to raise the baby alone as a single father. Where does this leave most women? Nowhere. Women will then either have to be willing to become mothers or risk spending their lives alone because men wouldn't want them long term anymore. Then we will have single women who would be all in for such a thing. Also, if you go through social media today, you'll see tons of videos from women who are hitting the wall and realizing how wrong they were to not start their families early on and settle down. They're complaining about how men are not giving them the attention and validation that they used to and instead are choosing younger women to start families with. Overall, feminism failed to liberate women as it intended, since liberty is not the same as financial independence. It encourages women to be at ease with who they are and with expressing their feminine side. Men have traditionally been protectors and providers for women. They thrive in these roles. It provides them with motivation. Similar to males, women's true mission isn't to run major corporations or join the boards of publicly traded firms. It's to be women. Feminism is in denial when it comes to actual statistics that show children are better off raised by both parents or a single father than if raised by just a mother. Yet our family courts still persist in prejudices and discrimination against fathers, reducing these children's outcomes in life. Feminism encouraged and empowered women to begin living their lives without the assistance of men. And this is how it made a difference in the world. It showed them that if they chose to pursue their education and go up the corporate ladder, they could become financially independent. It showed women that even without males in their life, they could still support their families and earn money to raise kids. It gave them the confidence to believe they could live their life as they saw fit, be who they wanted to be, and not be constrained by their innate urge to have children and nurture them. Over time, more and more women pursued careers in business, believed they could replace men as the dominant members of society, and essentially wasted their reproductive and prime years chasing either the traditional bad guys or their corporate goals. But as soon as these women reached their 30s and beyond, they began to realize that becoming pregnant was getting more and more difficult as time went on. Their discovery that life wasn't simply about accumulating riches or sticking to the extreme versions of feminism that make these women believe they can spend their lives without men or having kids while adhering to their inherent feminine instincts marked the beginning of their change in perspective. But feminism failed to instill in women the fact that their strong and independent boss babe life has an expiry date. Nothing prepares them for what stands in front of them after they hit the wall. And if they won't be able to conceive at the age of 45 or 50, how will they even take care of a lab-grown baby if they choose to have one? Raising a child requires physical strength. You can't just place a baby in a time machine and expect it to grow by itself. You have to hold it, walk with it run after it and be physically agile to be able to take care of it. The women who are rejoicing at this news forget all of that. When this lab-growing baby business becomes normal and common, it is going to bring up the SMV of younger women even more and reduce the age of the wall to maybe 28. Guys won't want women like they do now, except for only one thing. It's going to be a game changer. Thanks for watching The Circle of Kings. As always, we're looking forward to your support. So please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything all kings like yourself need to know.